What's up everybody, this is Nick from Part-Time Pilot. Today I want to talk about the concept of interpolation, specifically linear interpolation. So as pilots, we use a lot of data tables and sometimes when you use a data table, the value, the data you're using that you know, that you're using to reference in the table to get different data out isn't exactly written in the data table. So you, it's between two other values. So you have to interpolate between the two to get a more accurate answer out. So I'm going to show you how to do it. It's a little bit hard to explain. So we're going to go over an example, very detailed example so that we know what I'm talking about. So some of these examples as a pilot is like, we, we know an altitude and we want to get wind speed and direction from a winds aloft data table. So a lot of times there's like 3000 altitude row of data. There's a 6,000, 9,000, 12,000. So if your altitude is actually like 7,000, you have to interpolate in between for the wind speed and temperature and stuff like that. Another example is altimeter setting. We know in altimeter setting, we want to get a pressure altitude correction factor. Another example is we know an engine power setting and we want to get fuel consumption rate, or we might know an aircraft weight and we want to get the load factor. And these type of things, interpolation, you're going to need to be able to do this on the FAA written in order to get an accurate answer. So we always have a known data element to get us a new data element of what we want. However, sometimes the table of data doesn't always have the exact known data element that we have. So this is where we'll need to interpolate. So to interpolate, we can use the linear interpolation equation, which is here. Now it looks, might look complex, but as long as you write down the variables that you need and then input these and perform your order of orders of operations first, um, then we, you can do it accurately. So what are the different variables? So we have X. We'll start with X. X is the known data element we have. So for in the example of an altimeter setting to get a pressure altitude correction factor, we know the altimeter setting. So that'll be our X value. So if our altimeter setting was 29.4 and we want to get correction factor for that, then 29.4 is going to be our X. The data element of the same type as X, so altitude, weight, load factor, etc. So that'll be our, our, our altimeter as our known data element, but the one just below it in the table. So the one less than it. So remember, we don't see our value X, our 29.4. Let's say that's not in the table, but let's say 29.2 and 29.6 is, then 29.2 would be our X1, the one below it that is listed in the table. And X2, again, same type, so altimeter setting in our example, as our known data element X, but the one just above it. So in that example where the table lists 29.2 and 29.6, we have 29.4, so the one above that would be 29.6. So that would be our X2. And then Y is the data t element that we want. So this is, we're not gonna know this till the very end till we compute everything. And then Y1 is gonna be the same data element of the, so as Y. So in the example where we're using an altimeter setting for X to get out a correction factor for Y. So Y is the correction factor. So that means Y1 is gonna be the correction factor that corresponds to X1. So in the table, X1 is gonna be listed. X1 was 29.2. So this is your altimeter setting in inches of mercury. And then this is your conversion factor. So, and then you have 29.6. So this is our X1 and this is our X2. So Y is our conversion factor. So Y1 is gonna be the conversion factor associated on this line of data with X1. And then Y2 is gonna be on that line of data with X2. Confused? Yeah, me too. Okay, so like I said, this is hard to explain. So let's, if you don't get it, don't worry. Let's do an example. It makes much more sense with the numbers. So let's convert an altitude of 20, 2,500 to a pressure altitude using the table below if the local altimeter setting is 28.34. So here's our table of data. We want to get a pressure altitude. 
So we need our pressure altitude conversion factor to add to our current altitude in order to do that. So to get a pressure altitude, we just need to add our altitude to pressure altitude correction factor found from the table. That's what I just said. So we need to find 28.34 in the table and that'll give us a corresponding correction factor. But as you can see, there is not a 28.34. There's a 28.3 just below 28.34 and there's a 28.4 just above it. So we can't, so which one do we use? Well, we interpolate, so we make our own row of data right in between for 28.34 and we calculate what that Y value, that pressure altitude correction factor would be at 28.34. So that's what it says here. We have a problem. We don't have 28.34, so we need to interpolate. To understand how to use this equation, it's best to make a table for ourselves. So I like to, you know, make a table uh, just like this and then start entering in the data. So let's start with the X values because we that's what we have. We have this X, okay? So we have 28.34. That's our altimeter setting given to us. So now we know the X values are going to be the altimeter settings and that makes the y values the correction factor and here y is going to be what we calculate so now we can enter now that we know this we know the x values are altimeter setting and we know y values are correction factor we just start entering in x1 x2 y1 y2 so x1 is going to be the x value less than x so 28.34 so 28.3 is the value less than so we that's x1 and then x2 is going to be the one more than 28.34, which is the one the next row of data, which is 28.4. So that'll be our x2. And now y1 is the y value corresponding to x1. So it's the same row of data as x1, where x1 was 28.3. Y1 is 1533, which corresponds to our x1. And then y2, same thing, it corresponds to x2, which is 28.4. So in that row of data, it's 1436. So now we have all five variables, x, x1, x2, y1, y2, for this interpolation equation. Now we can enter in the values into that equation and get to calculating our y. So again, we have all the values that we need. Here's our equation. So now we have 1533 input for y1. We have 28.34 input for x. We have 28.3, which we input for x1. We have 1436, which we input for y2. 1533 again, which we put in for y1 here. 28.4, which we put in for x2. And 28.3, which we put in for x1. So now what we need to do is we need to use our orders of operation that we learned in math class way back when. And so what that, does, what that means is we need to do everything in parentheses first, okay? Then after parentheses, then we can do multiplication and division. So we'll start with dividing this fraction here, and then we'll multiply it by this quantity here. And then finally, we'll have a value here that we can add. We do addition last to our 1533. So if we do what's in the parentheses first, so 1436 minus 1533 gives us minus 97. 28.4 minus 28.3 gives us 0.1. And then 28.34 minus 28.3 gives us 0 0.04. So now we can do our division, minus 97 divided by 0 0.1. Okay, so that gives us minus 970. And now we can do minus 970 times 0 0.04, which gives us minus 38.3. And finally, we can add 1533 plus minus 38.3, 38.8, sorry, which is the same thing as 1533 minus 38.8, which gives us 1494.2. So we get a correction factor of 1494.2. So what we've essentially done, is we essentially made our own row of data here between 28.3 and 28.4 for 28.34 which has a correction factor of 1494.2. So now, going back to the example, the question, we had a altitude of 2500 that we wanted to change to a pressure altitude, so we know our correction factor is 1494.2, so if we add that to 2500, 
that gives us 3994.2 for our pressure altitude. Okay, thanks for watching. That's it. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe by clicking the button in the bottom right. And then if you aren't following me on Instagram, please do so at part period time period pilot. 